Good evening, friends, and welcome to another edition of Thanksgiving Thursdays, our midweek communion service. And uh, boy, I don't know about you guys, but for us, we really need this. It's just such a great time to come together, take a take a breath and step back from the edge of the cliff and just reflect on the goodness of Christ, His grace and mercy and love for us, and to be able to come to the table together. So mm-hmm. we're glad you're here, and we are most glad to welcome our friend and co-worker Matt Kleindenst with us tonight. Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, Pearsons. Good to see you guys. Hey. So, you too. So glad you're here. Hey, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about your history with the Village Chapel, how long you've been attending and, and what you do there, what's your area of ministry? We'd love to hear. Sure. Yeah. Um, I first started attending uh, by myself in uh, May of 2007. Mm. And uh, then when my wife, Jesse and I, we got married in January of 2008, we've been attending together ever since. And then uh, back in October of 2017, I uh, was added to the staff as the director of facilities. So on a typical Sunday, you would see me, I'm the guy with all the keys, uh, with the headset in. I'm just there to make sure that everything is working (laughs) properly, Mm -hmm. that everything goes off without a hitch. And that if something does happen, uh, I am that first responder and uh, thankfully, there have been no literal fires that I've had to put out <laughs> uh, in four years, but many figurative yeah. ones. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, because you do your job so well, rarely do we even notice what you're doing. For sure. Yeah, which is and awesome. That is the goal. Yeah. So. Well, you do it well. And besides sharing a first name, we also share a love of chickens. We both have chickens, don't we? Yes, that is correct. We are both chicken tenders. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So, uh, well said. Uh, well, so um, uh, Kristen's going to lead us in a prayer, and then Larry Stone is going to lead us in our call to worship. So, Kristen, would you pray for us? Absolutely. Just want to say thank you also for um, carving out time in your busy mm-hmm. schedule to be here tonight. It's such an encouragement to us and hopefully to you to really stop and be reminded of what's important. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, Our prayer tonight is part of Psalm 121. So let's go to the Lord together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your heart for us. Thank you for your word that is so rich in that love for us that teaches and instructs and encourages and walks alongside us. We are so grateful, Father. Thank you for these words uh, written so long ago. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who watches over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in, from this time forth, forevermore. Amen. 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 My name is Larry Stone, and Lois and I have been attending the Village Chapel for almost four years. We are active in the over 55 Sunday school class. I'm on the mission board, and both of us really enjoy singing in the choir. As we prepare our hearts to worship, let's read this hymn, Spirit of God That Moved of Old, Let's read it together as a prayer. Spirit of God that moved of old upon the water's darkened face, come when our faithless hearts are cold and stir them with an inward grace. Thou that art power and peace combined, all highest strength, all purest love, the rushing of the mighty wind, the brooding of the gentle dove. 
Come, give us still thy powerful aid, and urge on us, and make us thine. Nor leave the hearts that once were made fit temples for thy grace divine. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Larry. Well, friends, tonight is our last night for our devotionals in the Beatitudes, and we've really enjoyed going through them together. And this last Beatitude tonight, you know, Jesus tells us that as we pursue these character traits, we will lead a life that is so rich and rewarding that he calls it blessed. And yet, yet with this beatitude tonight, that seems like a curious thing. Uh, so let's read together uh, verses 10 through 12 of Matthew chapter 5, and then I've got a couple of thoughts to share. So starting in it, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Whoa, don't, don't you like internally find yourself wanting to raise your hand and say, wait, this just doesn't sound quite right, Jesus. First, you tell me, you know, to be merciful, to be a peacemaker. And then now you're telling me almost likely run into roadblocks when I do live this way and be persecuted. And my response is to rejoice and be glad. It doesn't seem to make sense at first, does it? Well, let's look at the arc of the Beatitudes so far, which reveal what John Stott calls a spiritual progression of relentless logic. And we start with being poor in spirit, acknowledging our lack and our utter dependence on God. We're encouraged to mourn over both our sin and the sin of the whole world. We're encouraged to be meek humble and gentle in the way we deal with others, allowing the grace and mercy of, of God to inform our behavior and our response to others. And we're encouraged to hunger and thirst after righteousness, not only confessing our sin, but hungering for that sin's replacement of righteousness in our lives. And then Jesus turns our attitude from our relationship with God towards others, we are to show mercy. We're to live purely in heart from, from the heart outwards to our outward actions. And we're to seek peace and reconciliation with others. And after all this, what's, what's the response to that type of living that Jesus tells us to expect? Can we expect a warm welcome from the world? Actually, no. He tells us to expect a negative response. And again, John Stott says about that, he says, persecution is simply the clash between two irreconcilable value systems. And if you think about it in that, in that way, the world, the world wants to go its own way. And yet Jesus calls us to follow him. The world worships at the altar of autonomy, wealth, success, beauty. The world says, be bold and brash. The ends justify the means. You decide who you are. Jesus calls us to take evil so seriously that we mourn over it. The world says, live your best life. And Jesus tells us to lay down our life. And the rub is that Following Jesus is countercultural. We're going against the grain. And as we live for Christ, we are going to rub the world the wrong way, and the world is going to react to us, sometimes pretty strongly. And yet, so it, it's that very difference, that very distinctiveness, that while it's rubbing the world the wrong way, it points to God and it tells the world that there is a better way. So we most likely will encounter pushback, 
some persecution for righteousness sake. And here's something else I was thinking about today. In addition to external persecution from the world's response to this different way of life, we're also going to face some internal persecution, if you will, because frankly, the way of Christ will rub us the wrong way internally as well. Jesus tells us to lay down our lives, to pick up our cross and follow after him. And we always, we don't always want to do that, do we? I know I don't. Sometimes the rub I feel in my life is that Jesus is calling me to a life that rubs me the wrong way. I don't want to lay down my life. Instead, I want to throw a little tantrum and kind of keep all my toys to myself. I want things just the way I want them. And that's not what Jesus is calling us to. How does he tell us to respond to this persecution? He tells us to be glad, to rejoice. And I think one of the reasons why is this is our certificate of authenticity of being followers of Christ is this rub, this persecution, this um, going against the grain that we feel. In Acts chapter 5, we read of the apostles being brought before the council, before the Sanhedrin. And in Acts chapter 5, verses 40 and 41, when they, the council, had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And then they, the apostles, left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name, for the name of Jesus. Paul tells us in Romans that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And I've got one little little other passage from Romans chapter 6, where Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For we have, if we have been united with him, in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. And man, I love that. We, we lay down our lives. We follow him. We endure this hardship of the present time. And, and yet then we get to have this gospel party, you know, forever and ever. Jesus is telling us, that as we follow him, we are going to face pushback and persecution from the world, but, but that what awaits us is more glorious than anything we can ever imagine on earth. A world finally and truly set right. A world where justice is true and sure, where relationships are flourishing. We live together in shalom with God and each other. And what awaits us is Jesus himself. Amen. Amen. So as we pray, prepare our hearts to come to the table together and to have a little taste, taste and see that the Lord is good, a little taste of, of that intimacy with Jesus. Um, Matt, would you lead us in our confession of sin as we prepare for that? Certainly. It'd be my honor. Uh, if you'll join me, yeah. I'll lead you in the confession of sin. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. Have mercy on us, O God, in your loving kindness. In your great compassion, cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Restore to your people the joy of your salvation and sustain us with bountiful grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Matt. Well, friends, this is where I, I would encourage you um, 
just to gather some simple table elements, some wine or juice and some bread or crackers and gather them. And let's come to the table together. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul tells us, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So friends, let's just take a moment and go to the Lord's table together and rejoice in gratefulness for what he has done. Amen. than silver or gold I'd rather be his than have riches untold I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hand than to be Thank you, Tranny, and the TVC worship team for sharing your artistry with us this week. Uh, now, if you'll join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Matt. Thanks yeah. for being with us, bro. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Glad to have thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Well, friends, thank you for joining us. And I pray that this carries you through the week into the weekend. And, and I'd like to invite you to join us for our online worship services this Sunday at 9 and 11 or anytime after that, you know, whenever it's convenient for you and encourage you to stay connected. And uh, as we leave here tonight, I just pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the father 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit would be with you all. Amen. 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 Go in peace, Amen. friends. Thanks for joining us. See you, Matt. See you later. Bye, y'all. Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. See you guys. Jesus, then